Hello, everybody. Josh Rubenstein, the director of media for Kaiser Permanente Southern California. It's Minority Health Month. And one of the things that Kaiser Permanente is committed to is diversity, equity, inclusion, and finding the next generation of diverse physicians. And we are lucky that we found someone at the Bernard Tyson School of Medicine uh, to join us this afternoon because, of course, overall health, improving overall health and improving access to health means getting that diverse workforce and finding uh, the, the physicians and the workforce that reflects the communities we serve. We are here with Wilkin Munoz. And Wilkin, in three years, will be Dr. Wilkin Munoz, crossing our fingers. Of course, you got a big test this week. So, you know, we, we know you got a lot on your plate right now, but you are one of the fine med students at Kaiser Permanente. So, so Wilkin, tell me your story. How did you, first of all, where are you from? Yeah, so um, originally I was born in Nicaragua, but um, I immigrated to the United States at around the age of three, and I grew up in South Florida. Um, and now I find myself here in sunny wow. Southern California doing my MD degree. What, what got you here? Yeah, to Southern California or just like yeah. medicine in general? Well, to Southern California, and then we're going to get into to, to medicine too. Yeah, so I guess um, specifically KP or Kaiser Permanente School of Medicine was one of the many schools I applied to. Um, and luckily I was able to secure a spot within the class and, and something that really called my attention to the school in particular was its mission statement to, you know, preparing um, physicians that are community oriented, uh, looking to really empower the next generation of physicians. Um, to address health disparities within minority populations and communities. And, you know, the school came on my radar, applied, lucky to get in, um, accepted right away. And now I find myself here in Pasadena. It's very exciting. And and the Bernard Tyson School of Medicine is is brand new. So you're, you're yeah. in uh, this fledgling program. Um, what made yeah. you want to become a doctor? Yeah, I, I think that question is so packed with so many emotions and feelings. I think one thing that stands out immediately to me, of one of the reasons why, is I guess just like my experience with the healthcare system um, and growing up in a minority community, in an immigrant community, um, seeing a lot of the health disparities that exist, a lot of um, just a lot of people in my community feeling the need or wanting, you know, physicians that they can connect to, that they can see themselves reflected in. Um, and I think as I grew older, that desire to be that person to connect with um, the mom or the dad or the sister or the brother, whatever it is, that desire really drove me towards medicine um, and my desire to just serve my community through health and health promotion. How long were you in Nicaragua before you came to the States? Uh, just three years, yeah. Three years. So I basically grew up in, in Miami. So M Miami was home. Yeah. What what did your family say when you, you told them you wanted to go into medicine? Um, I think initially they were really ecstatic and really excited. I mean, you know, I think especially within minority communities, physicians hold this um, social power and social, you know, regard. Um, and I think as time went on, you know, medicine is a is a long path. Like it's not just graduate high school and it's in medicine. No, you go to, through your undergrad. You might take a gap year. It might take two gap years. And it's 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 um, you know, my parents seeing that process. I think um, was something they didn't anticipate. But I think I'm so lucky that they have supported me and really encouraged me through this process. And I think they're still very proud, still very encouraging. Um, which I'm very grateful for. Give me a day in your life. What What is school like? What do you do? So brief summary, wake up, get dressed, get ready. Um, I actually don't have breakfast, so I skip breakfast altogether because I intermittent fast. On purpose? So it's intermittent fasting is what you're doing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because I'm a heavy snacker, so I feel like constantly snacking through studying through class and intermittent fasting really keeps me accountable. Um, but wake up, get ready, go to class. I'm in class from like 8.30 to 12.30 on most days. Um, have lunch and then usually probably like a meeting, maybe an extracurricular club meeting, um, a meeting on one of the committees that I'm on, maybe some type of planning, 
then usually I head to the gym, I come back and it's just like from maybe 5 p.m. to midnight, just straight studying. Honestly, um, I throw in dinner somewhere in between do you, <laughs> and do you, I go to sleep and I do it over again. Do you have a social life at all? Or have you given that up for three years? Yeah, well, luckily, I'm really lucky to have be in a class that's very collaborative, very friendly, and my social life honestly exists in school. Yeah. Is it like Grey's Anatomy? Because so, that's what we think the world, that's the outside world thinks that's what med school is, you know? Honestly, I wish it was like Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a lot more fun, interesting. No, it's a lot more sitting, reading text, and every so often looking up um talking to your friend for five minutes and then literally back coming back yeah do you do you feel like you're part of something special being a part of this new school this new med school yeah i think definitely um because it's so new it's so fresh um i feel like within the next five to ten years you know we can only predict what the school's reputation is or will be in terms of like the type of physicians it you know brings out into the world. And so I think being only the second class um, in this school's history is, is feels exciting. You know, it's kind of like 10 years from now, I will be kind of like the, the one of the classes that sets the president of like what the school does and with its student body and, and what the student body is, is capable of, of achieving and hopefully sending, setting a, a good solid foundation for the, the classes to come. What kind of things are you learning right now? What do you, what is, what's a first year med student learning? Is it just the basics right now? Ooh, so um, I think it depends from school to school, but luckily I think KP really does a good job at balancing not only like the science and the very technical, like this disease, this drug, but also the art of medicine. So on top of like learning what medications to give a diabetic patient, what medications to give um, for hypertension. We also, they also integrate communication skills and learning how to explain medications to patients, how to, um, you know, give, deliver bad news, which is honestly something that we're, we're practicing tomorrow, how to effectively communicate with patients in an empathetic way, in a way that shows respect for their being. And, um, on top of all those other things, learning physical exam maneuvers and how to take history um, upon so many other things that escape my mind at the moment. You, you, you said you said it very interestingly. You called it the art of medicine, right? And you, yeah. we, you know, we think of it as a, of course, it's a uh, science, but there is an art to it, mm -hmm. isn't there? Yes, yes. I think especially when it, since it's a job that is very patient focused, you know, I think the role of the physician, at least in my perspective, in the way that I see it is central on the patient, how we communicate, how we help patients reach better health outcomes. And it's not just let me prescribe this medication um, and I can clock out, but it's really this art of communication, trying to build strategies with the patient to reach those better health outcomes, like what life mo lifestyle modifications can we do to decrease um, your hypertension, what lifestyle modifications can we do to bring your diabetes in control? Um, how do I interact with you in a way where you get the sense that I'm on your team, that I'm not just here giving you these diagnoses, trying to give you these pills, but I'm someone who generally cares for your health, for your well-being. Um, and that's all, you know, in the art of medicine um, and how to interacting with the patient and, and in an effective way. You mentioned earlier that that you know you are committed to this because of your background. Do you do you feel a sense of responsibility? Yeah, I think definitely. I think growing up being you know that kid that accompanies their parents to the doctor's office and the, there's no one that speaks Spanish, and you kind of having to be that interpreter in the moment in the spot, and you're like seven years old, and you're being pelted with these um, this medical jargon. I think growing up, I, I do have the sense of responsibility that I don't want others to have to go through that process. I don't want like a seven year old to have this responsibility of like, I have to be the person kind of distilling this medical information that I don't understand to my parent and hopefully nothing's getting lost in translation. And so I think that sense of, of I do have that sense of responsibility that I want to be a physician that can deliver this care, um, can, 
you know, serve my community because that's something that at least a lot of the times my parents, unfortunately, weren't able to receive. That's such an interesting position to be in. It, it, it As I think about the Oscars and the movie yeah. Coda, which is about, uh, you know, it stands for children of deaf adults and mm -hmm. where a child has to do the translating for the family, for the parents. It, it's that same thing that you're talking about, where these are diverse communities yeah. um, and a child takes on this responsibility that, that they shouldn't have to because we need to be more equipped, especially in healthcare, right? Where we need to do a better yeah. job of having physicians who have diverse backgrounds mm -hmm. come from, speak, speak are, are bilingual, speak many different languages, right? Um, yeah. It's, and go it, ahead. It, sorry, no, I was, and it really like, you know, permeates not only through the communication, but just even like the clinic settings, you know, like the amount of times I filled out forms, um, being, a, again, a seven-year-old because my parents could not read English either and having to um, fill out forms or call and make appointments. And it's, it's you know, like you said, it's, it's the system and the infrastructure of medicine moving towards a way that we can cater our care towards patient and patient populations. Um, and then I think that really is a factor that drives me in my medical journey. What, tell me what, and, and I don't, you can tell me it's too early and you don't know, but what's your specialty? Where do you want to go? Yeah. So, I mean, there's, my mind right now is going in so many different directions, but I think one thing is I really want to choose a specialty that allows me to interact with people of my same ethnicity um, and, and background so I can, you know, be of service to them and a resource. Um, and right now, I think etern internal medicine is really something that is currently in my mind um, for the sense of, of being able to interact with patients um, in a way where I can help them, empower them, provide resources for them, help them in their interventions to improve health outcomes. Um, that's just one of, of, of the many specialties that I think is really drawing my attention at the moment. And one of the things I've noticed that over at the School of Medicine, they've got really cool facilities there. Right? There's like a whole, yeah. there's a whole operating room uh, where, where you can mock doing surgery, mock doing, there's, there are rooms where you can mock doing uh, a patient uh, yeah. assessment, right? Yeah. And deliveries too. We have like this really, this really realistic mannequin of a baby that cries. Um, it's really high tech stuff, and I think I'm really uh, blessed to be here. Do you, is the rest of your class as committed as you are to that that diversity that that you're speaking of? Do you have others that are that are on that same kind of journey? Yeah, I think 100. percent I think the school did a really good job at recruiting a student body that is really driven to you know the one of our threads at the school is um, equity, diversion, and um, diversity and inclusion, and I think everyone in the class echoes that in. In, in their own respective ways, you know, whether it be people from different backgrounds, different communities, people more interested in health advocacy and health promotion, you know, on, on the political sense, on policy, um, you know, it, it all really does center on this common thread that we all believe in, in diversity in medicine, equity in medicine, and trying to just create a better health infrastructure for, you know, the America of the future. So 10 years down the line, uh, yeah. You have graduated, you're practicing. Um, what would you say to that, that class that's graduating 10 years from now? You know, put yourself, you know, if we're going to fast forward uh -huh. in time, what are you going to tell those young med students to give them advice that are just uh -huh. starting out? That are just starting out. I would say never believe in the power in within yourself. And I know it's kind of corny, <laughs> but I think a lot of the times especially like in medicine, um, a lot of these things sound, or a lot of barriers or challenges sound like these insurmountable mountains. Like, oh my God, eventually I have to apply for residency. I have to try to get into residency. I have to do these rotations. And at every point, I think in medical school, everything sounds like this giant mountain that's really hard to overcome. And I think simply having the confidence in yourself and saying like, I've made it this far. I can continue going forward. Um, I may slip and trip along the way, but I can make it on the other side, I think goes a long way in not only getting you through situations, but building the confidence that you need um, to enact the changes that you wanna make, to be the physician you wanna become um, and just keep you, you know, keep you going. I love it, I love it. Okay, couple quick questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, best snack food for studying? 
Um, pretzels, the yogurt covered ones, though, not the regular, <laughs> not ones. the regular ones. Yogurt covered, so there's a little, little something sweet to go along with it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and 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 what are the best? What are a good couple of good study techniques, tips that for for people that are are thinking about going into medicine or just at home and college right now? In general, um, I would say listen to your body and your mind. If you're sitting there and reading the same paragraph ten times and it's not coming through take a break, take a 10, 15 minute walk, take a snap break and then come back. You know, a lot of the times it's kind of like trying to force ourselves, keep reading these par- No, listen to your body, listen to your mind. I'm good with that. And it's probably good for all of us at work too, by the way, just take a good, yeah. good health break, good mental health break. Perfect. Uh, Wilkin Munoz, I can't wait for the day I get to call you Dr. Munoz. I know, I know you. you will. I know you are going to be such a fine example of a Kaiser Permanente physician, Kaiser Permanente education from the Bernard Tyson, Bernard J. Tyson School of Medicine. Um, can't thank you enough for for taking a break out of your day. I know you have to get to studying right now because I know you have a test, yeah. and I and you just came from class, so I I truly appreciate yeah. the time. Yeah, no, thank you for giving me this opportunity, really, to speak on my experience and hopefully inspiring other Hispanic students. Um, to pursue medicine and, and, and really be able to see themselves as future physicians. Outstanding.